I just talked to you guys about um, the schedule and what you guys have coming. It, it doesn't get any easier with Philadelphia. When you look at Maxi and what he's become as a player, what stands out for you? Well, obviously he's an all star. You know, he's a dynamic guard in our league now. And, uh, just his ability, he's a three level scorer. His ability to get in the paint, um, and finish at the rim, high layups, floaters, uh, decent touch at mid range. They don't shoot many, but uh, he can uh, if needed. And obviously he's a three point guy, you know, so it's great handles. He's a, he's a force to be reckoned with. You know, we got to make sure that we're uh, attentive to everything. Uh, pressure for 48 minutes and making them, making them make some tough ones. You've said before, like, you know, it's time to buckle it down, but do you have a loss like that against Milwaukee where they scored that much in the first half? How much was maybe bothersome or frustrating with, hey, you know what was at stake and then they have to come out like that in the first half? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it's definitely frustrating. Uh, you know, we, I mean, it's over now. We can move on to, to the next game. Uh, but for sure, you know, we – we definitely can't lay eggs like that. You know, we, we got to come out with a lot of better focus and a lot more sense of urgency than what we've been having. Uh, that's been way, way unacceptable, and we all know that. So, you know, we got to be better these last 14, really lock in. And it starts with uh, with us three and our attention to detail and our focus. And when we're good and we're focused and locked in, the rest of the team can follow. Brad, when it's not easy when a guy suffers an injury or retires to get back to the level, to get back into the game. What does it say about Isaiah Thomas that he's been able to step away and then get back to the level? It speaks volumes, man, because I'm, I'm a huge IT fan from competing against him for so many years when he was in Boston. and uh, You know, being his teammate in D.C. as well, like I've, I've got a chance to see him every single day, put the work in and, and uh, you know, the challenges that he went through as a player, uh, you know, overcoming some injuries, too. But, you know, to be able to come back now, like you said, it's very unheard of. Uh, but I commend him, man. I salute him. He's always been a worker. Uh, he believes in the process. He trusts his work. And, you know, that's just the evolution of you know, today's game and just the evolution of who he is. You know, he's he's always going to be a hooper. You know, there's nothing that can stop him or set him back um, from accomplishing his goals and dreams. And, and he's one that lives it out, man. So he's a great prime example, I feel like, to kids and to a lot of people, you know, of just going out and, and just keep pushing. You know, no matter if people tell you no, no matter if people shut you down, uh, he's heard it all, you know, and to see him back is, I love it, and I'm excited for him. With the experience you've had with him as a teammate, what can he provide to the locker room for you guys right now? Uh, one, we all know he's a good offensive player for sure, but I think just his leadership, his ability to be able to uh, lead, lead a locker room, um, encourage guys, you know, give his his, his IQ of the game, um, which is which is super high. I think he'll definitely help me out a lot with running a point and just giving me some uh, different viewpoints and ways that I can attack, or can attack that I may have not have seen before, you know, so uh, and then just when we plug him in, like he's he's going to be dynamic for us. He's going to be a scorer. He's going to be able to help us. So, you know, we need that that shooting, his shooting ability because uh, we need more threes. You mentioned his work ethic. Just what impresses you the most about it and just his commitment to get better and, and continue to evolve as a player? I feel like you just said everything, <laughs> but he's all of those things, you know, um, you know, work ethic is something that you have to have. You can't necessarily give it to somebody, you know, um, and he was born with it uh, from when he was in high school. You know, everybody called him small. Everybody called him too small. Everybody said he couldn't make it. And he's he's checked every box and accomplished every goal that and rolled off every naysayer there is. And I think that's what continues to push him and motivate him. And then he. I know he has uh, three beautiful kids that he, that he raises and, and that look up to him. So I know that pushes him and motivates him as well. Uh, but it's just exemplary. I think when you just have that love and passion for it, man, you'll do anything to get back to it. In film sessions, like going over Milwaukee and the three specifically, how important is accountability in those settings and watching those back? Oh, uh, huge. And we had it today, um, one through 15. Everybody needs to be better regarding the three point line, have more of a sense of urgency of guarding our guys and getting out to shooters. Um, especially when teams, you know, have uh, stretch fives who can shoot. I think that's kind of what's been kicking our butt a little bit uh, as of late. So we got to be a lot better with that. Um, understanding personnel and just big sense of urgency. Like it's, it's go time. What is the mid game adjustment like as a defender when you have certain guys that you're okay with shooting, but once they knock down a few and making the adjustment there? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, we have to avoid those things. Like obviously, you're going to make adjustments. Guys are pros. You know, they're, they they lace them up just like we do. 
but at the same time, we can we can control a lot of the threes that that they're attempting. You know, just not even getting looks up. I think that helps us. Uh, when guys are getting shots up and and you know getting good looks and balls ro rotating and popping and they're getting a good feel, like it's it's, it's going to be tough to beat them that night. So. Uh, I think once we do a better job of starting the game and taking those initial reactions away, we'll be a lot better suited throughout the game. You mentioned the sense of urgency. What does that kind of look like after a couple of games stretched like that? Is it conversations? Is it just kind of a collective acknowledgement, like we, we need to come out with more fire? Like, what does that kind of look like? Oh, it's a little bit of both. Like, obviously, we talk about it. You know, we, we point out where we need to be better, how we can be better. Um, but the biggest thing is is – it's just your commitment to it as an individual. Obviously, you got to look yourself in the mirror and, you know, decide how you can help benefit the team and how you can just give a little bit more. I think because that's what we all got to do. We just all have to give a little bit more than what we're giving, you know, and I think that'll, that'll put us where we need to be. But, you know, we got to we got to be honest with ourselves and, and have, like you said, that accountability. And once we have that, I think that propels us to be a better team and better better fit team than what we, we've been struggling with later lately. This week, Marks. Of course, the March Madness beginning on Thursday. The Florida Gators are in it. Mm -hmm. You've seen the bracket. And who are your top picks? Oh, that's tough, man. Uh, it's a lot of great, great tournament games. There's a lot of great conference games. Um, a lot of upsets. A lot of teams, you know, clicking right now before returning. Uh, I love UConn. I love Coach Hurley and what he does. I've always, I've always been a fan of him. So. You're still the champs until you're beaten again. So I think think you obviously have to keep them. Uh obviously my Gators, but they're in a tough little in a tough little region. Uh at Houston at the top. I think we could play Marquette in the second round, which is tough for me because Shocker recruited me at Florida. So that's a little that's gonna be a tough one for me. <laughs> that's gonna be a tough one. Uh but I hope Shocker I hope Shocker does what I am I am pulling for him because he's Everywhere he goes, he has success and, and he rallies his troops. Uh, you know, so I'll have a tough, tough, tough Marquette coming out of just that South region. Midwest is another tough one. Um, Purdue, Texas, Tennessee, I think. But I think I'm going. I think I went Purdue in that round. I like Zach. Zach's a seven four monster. We have the same agent too, so that's that works. <laughs> that works. Uh, uh, and my boy C Love at, at Arizona. I hope I hope Caleb sees North Carolina in the Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight, whatever Elite it eight, is. Yeah. Elite Eight knocks them off and finishes business like he should. Back when you your one year, did you guys go to the Elite Eight, right? Yeah. Lead eight, my last game was here. Right. Yeah. And uh wow. at Footprint. Oh, man. Yeah, and the first question I was asked is, Are you going to the NBA right after the game? <laughs> <laughs> it's the craziest time ever. I was like, Yeah, God, <laughs> I can't even sit through the ponder the loss. Like, what you doing now? Right. Are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. Yep. Uh, yep. Who was on that team again? Uh, that was Peyton Siva, oh. Russ Smith, Shane Bahannon. Gorgie Dang. Um, who else? Wayne Blackshear. Yeah. Russ was awesome those years. The Russ kicked the ass. Was that the year Louisville won? No, Kentucky won. Kentucky 2012. Yeah, Lee Davis. AD. AD, D Lamb. T. Yeah, Cal told me to come join their team too. I just I told him, nah, I'd rather play against you, and I lost three damn times. <laughs> <laughs> lost three straight to Kentucky that year, and we were up twenty at half in both in both home and away games. Yeah. And lost the games. Fair Man, to say, fair to say that Shaka was pretty much there was George Mason before then. We went to the two thousand six Final Four, uh, but he was. Pretty much one of the first to have the mid majors enter the final four way to BCU, BCU, right? Yeah. After he recruited you to Florida. Yeah. So Shaka actually left before I got to Florida. So I still have that little. I'm still mad at him for that. You know, he did all that hard ass work, and right. you know, you leave me once, <laughs> you know, and then you go have success somewhere else. Uh, him and Baby Patino, Rick Patino, little little, little Patino was like that too. He left and, and he went to Minnesota. And, 
had his success too. So I was like, you know, you guys just left me out to dry. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I, I always root for them. I'm always happy for those guys, man. Those young coaches, uh, they're super energetic, and you know, they just they relate to the, the kids a lot um, in today's game. And you can see that they get good results out of them. So I definitely, I always, I always pull for those guys. For sure. My last question was about the fact that you mentoring Jay before he got to Boston and Duke, of course. But what about Larry Hughes being the St. Louis legend that he is with the Billikens in that great year they had in 98 under uh, Charlie Schoonauer? Mm -hmm. Schoonmaker, I think, right? No, uh, Schoonauer. Schoonauer, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, no, Spoon is a great coach. But Larry, Larry's an unbelievable talent. Um, I didn't get to interact with Larry a lot growing up. Uh, some I wish I, I, I did have that relationship with him a little bit. Uh, he was actually related to Jason and his and Larry and Jason's dad played on the same high school team. Yeah. So they have that affiliation. Uh, but Larry was was the prototype for everybody growing up. Like he and Larry, I mean, uh, he and D Miles and uh, David Lee, like these guys like paved the way for all of us to, you know, you know, come in and, and, and make a name for ourselves and kind of see how it is to be a pro and what the journey's like, you know. So, you know, I always salute. Uh, Larry and commend him, you know, for being a pioneer in that regard and, and just kind of just showing us the way and just showing us how to be pros. Sure. All right. Thank, Thank you, Brad. No Thank problems. You. Yeah, D-Miles, yeah, man. We got a couple people. Yeah, see him on